Hello and welcome to this next episode of the Product Biz Podcast. My name is Monica Little and I'm your host and I am just so excited to introduce you to Rose from Sweet Rosy Soaps. Rose is one of my members inside Etsy Algorithm Secrets, inside Product Biz Academy, and she has done just such a phenomenal job in growing her business that I wanted to bring her on for her to really share with you what it truly takes. I want you to know the dedication and the commitment that's required and how to show up for your business in a way to get the results like Rose has. Specifically in this little episode, what we are talking about is her progress on Etsy, how she joined Etsy Algorithm Secrets with an established Etsy shop. She had 600 sales on Etsy. She was on Etsy for quite a few years. And then she decided to join Etsy Algorithm Secrets to up-level her business even more, to take it to the next level, to learn and understand the strategy of how to turn it into something that's going to grow even faster and even easier on her. She tells you the story of how she went from those 600 orders on Etsy to a thousand orders on Etsy, meaning she got 400 new orders in just three months after the joining program. She's getting amazing exposure in terms of book publishing companies, finding her on Etsy, reaching out to her to partner with her for a launch of a book that just coincides so perfectly with the products that she sells. She's also getting so much exposure on Etsy in terms of party favor orders where people are coming to her buying 25 units, 35 units, 100 units with her biggest party favor order that happened on Etsy was an order for $1,500 worth from one person for party favors for their upcoming bridal shower. This is the story of Rose, of how she took her Etsy shop and elevated it, how she continues to invest in herself, how she continues to believe in her business, how she builds confidence in herself, how she sees these amazing results, the work ethic and grit that is required to make it happen, and also how she's now feeling like she's truly building and running a real business. I'm so excited to introduce you to just the kindest soul in the world. And without further ado, let's bring on Rose from Sweet Rosy Soaps so you can hear more of her story. Hello, Rose. I am so excited to chat with you today all about Etsy and the amazing progress that you've made on Etsy. Hi. All right. We are going to dive in um, and hear a little bit more of your story. So before we ask some questions just about your Etsy progress and where you're at, I would love for you to introduce yourself, just um, your business, what you make, share us a little bit about how you got started and bring us on that journey of your business. Hi, I'm Rose. Um, I make um, dessert soap. Sorry. I'm sorry. Can I start over? Can. Yes, of uh, course you can. Right. No worries. Okay. Will you cut all that out then? Yeah, yeah. I can cut oh, okay. that out. My editor okay. will, yeah. Okay. Hi, I'm Rose. Um, I make dessert soaps. My company name is um, Sweet Rosy Soaps. Oh, let me start over. I'm sorry. You don't got to worry about it. I mean, whatever you say is going to be perfect, so don't worry about it. I'll start over again. Okay. Hi, I'm Rose from Sweet Rosy Soaps. I make fun dessert soaps from donuts to cupcakes to cake slices and fruits. Um, I've been a soap maker for quite some time. Um, I relaunched my Etsy site in 2000. Um, took a different path. Um, I started out making all natural soaps and I was kind of doing too much. I was, I was trying to make too many things. So I was making natural soaps. I was doing party favors. I was making the dessert soaps. So I narrowed it down, um, to the dessert soaps and party favor focus. Yeah, I love it. And I think this is such going to be such a great conversation because you have been on Etsy for a while. And then when you started to dive into the course, it's a really interesting point of view because some people dive into Etsy algorithm secrets being a brand new Etsy shop, right? And starting from scratch. But then there's some people kind of in the same situation as you are where you had an established Etsy shop. You were on Etsy for some years. You actually had a lot of great traction and then it was just kind of amplifying it even further. So tell me a little bit more about before you joined Etsy Algorithm Secrets and dived into the course, what was your Etsy shop like? Because I believe you had 600 sales, right? So tell, tell me a little bit more about how many sales you had before you joined and how often you got sales and tell me more about how things were back then. 
Um, so prior to joining um, PBA, I I had quite a few orders. I think I did, it was 600 order, around 600 orders. Um, so orders were coming in um, and it was just kind of up and down. Um, but I also wasn't focused completely. I had another job, I had two other jobs. So I was working three jobs. And um, so it was just, I didn't have the, the focus that I have now. Mm -hmm. And streamlining the, the business and getting it to the next level is why I joined. Yeah, awesome. And when you had those 600 sales, so how long did it take you to get those 600 sales? Was that since you had like your previous Etsy shop with the natural soap? Are some of those sales from then? Or was this strictly with when you relaunched your dessert soap, you had 600 sales over X amount of years? No, it started, um, I started a brand new um, Etsy shop. Mm -hmm. I closed the other one down. Um, and then I started a completely new one. So that all those sales came from the dessert soaps. Awesome. And then when did you start that new one? What year was that? Do you remember? It was 2000. Okay. So that was 2000. It was, Got it. it. Was 2000. Yeah. Got it. So from 2000 until like 2022, you kind of had your dessert soap up on Etsy. And over those years, that's how you got to 600 sales. Is that correct? That's correct. Got it. Okay. And then tell me a little bit more about your Etsy shop, like when you put it together and were you updating it? What information did you have? What type of photos did you have before joining the program? Did it kind of feel like you were just throwing spaghetti at the wall? Did you feel like you had a strategy behind it? Talk me through how you built your Etsy shop and how you put all those pieces together on your own. Um, but what I did was um, I just first started making products. From there, I photographed everything myself. Um, I put the whole shop together myself, um, all the listings, everything. And um, yeah, so I, 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 I kind of did a step-by-step, -step, you know, with the products, the, the photography, the listings, and just kind of pieced it all together. Yeah, awesome. And how did you feel when you were putting it together back then? Did it kind of feel like you were just maybe winging it and just trying whatever to see what it worked? Did you feel like you had a plan? What were some of those emotions back then? Um, back then, the focus was just get the Etsy site up. Mm -hmm. I really didn't have a strategy. Yeah. And that's another reason why I joined um, PBA because I really didn't have an outline. I just I was just focused on getting the site up yeah. as fast as I could and make sales. Um, my listings were very short. Mm -hmm. I didn't have all the information that we talked about. Um, so I def definitely did not have an outline. I just decided like, let's get the site up. Let's get the sales. Let's figure it out. And I kind of just threw myself into the fire. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, which is what a lot of people do, right? And and I think one of two things happens at that point in time. And either people kind of, like you said, you're just throwing yourself in the fire, putting stuff out there, maybe not with a strategy, um, doing it step by step, photographing on your own, maybe a little bit shorter listings in terms of the descriptions and details. And one of two things happen, right? I think some people get, uh, I don't want, I don't want to say lucky, but for some people it takes off, right? But for other people, it kind of is a little bit stagnant. So it's great to see that what you did did work right you kind of had that proof of concept to say people love my dessert soaps and people are buying it so you had this proof that it works tell me a little bit more about why you joined because i heard you say you wanted some strategy i heard you say wanting to take it to the next level but obviously your etsy shop was working so did you just feel like this this can be bigger and something more can happen or what were some of those more reasonings as to why you joined the reason i joined um was because i really wanted to do this full time i just really want to get the business to the next level and i think i started off with a pretty good base but with all the fine tuning, I see now that it's, it is growing in the direction that I wanted to go. Um, so that, that was the main reason is definitely just getting the business to the next level. And I felt like I did everything that I possibly could 
with the knowledge that I had. And then I saw you with your business and I thought, you know, she's doing it. I can do it. I, I'm going to learn from her. And, and that was, that was it. Yeah. I love it. And yeah. I love what you said too about like fine tuning, because that is a lot that we did with you. And this is, this is a very important distinction for the person who's listening of if you come into NC Algorithm Secrets or Product Based Academy and you are a brand new business, then it's kind of like there's you you have the game plan from start and you have all this information from the start, but then there's people who join Etsy Algorithm Secrets that are like you that have an established business. And this is where we get to do the really, really, really fine tuning. And sometimes mm -hmm. I think people who have established businesses come into the program and are expecting like this one big massive thing that maybe they have been doing and in reality it's just the small finer details of adding in more descriptions updating the titles the tags um, making sure that you're getting star seller and things like that so i have a couple of questions for you on some of the updates that that we made while working together but i want to hear from you first on when you talk about fine tuning like what are some of those things that we specifically did with your etsy shop that you that you started to adjust after you enrolled in the program first thing was pricing mm-hmm so you taught me how to really price out the products and I was undercharging for so long and barely making a profit. Mm -hmm. And now that we went, now that you taught me how to go through the whole process and how to price your products correctly, now the prices make sense. Mm -hmm. And not that they make sense that um, every sale that comes in, I know I'm making a profit. Yeah. Not wondering like, oh, maybe I only made a dollar profit. No, I'm making exactly what I should on each each specific product. Yeah. And and tell me, can I, can I dive in a little bit on that? Um, <laughs> tell me a little bit more about how you priced your products before. Was it just kind of taking a look to see what other people priced and you were trying to be lower than them? Was it just really a shot in the dark? How did you price your products before going through that exercise? Um, I had my own little formula. It wasn't correct. It was maybe making a little bit of a profit, but not a full profit. Mm. And I think I was kind of looking around Etsy, seeing what other people were pricing at. I'm like, okay, I'll do a little smidge higher. But then I kind of knew what my base products cost me to make the product, but I didn't elaborate on that. Mm -hmm. So I was undercutting myself completely. And I just, at one point, I just didn't think, I mean, maybe I just didn't have the confidence no, think knowing that customers would buy my product at the price where I'm selling it. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like definitely confident that my prices are exactly where they should be. Yes. And that, that was been huge. So thank, thank you for that. Yeah, That's been of like course. Yeah, and I think it's so interesting to see because a lot of people do think that you have to be the cheapest product on Etsy. But I remember one of the first conversations that you and I had, you said, like, I know my donut soaps are better than any donut soap out there. And I loved like the confidence that you had in your product. And it's like, okay, we just got to make sure that your pricing is number one, like you said, so you're making a profit, but number two, also showing people that you all have the best donut soaps out there. And that's why your pricing might be higher than other people who are selling donut soaps on Etsy, but, but your quality and your like design and the love that you put into your donut soaps is completely different compared to other people on Etsy. And you are just so much more elevated. So I love, I love that whole pricing discussion of, of seeing you actually charge what you're worth, but also continuing to get sales. Because a lot of people think when you raise prices and your sales are gonna go down, but tell me more about the process because we raised your prices a couple times. And what did you see every time we raised the price? Did you see the sales come in? Did you see them pause? What was that like? The first time we changed the prices, more sales came in. Maybe not as many as before because I was undercutting, but I was making more money with less sales mm -hmm. and making a profit. Yeah. Instead of selling more and making less. Right. Selling a ton, but not. Less. 
Yeah. And that's what a lot of people do. Like they're selling and cranking out a ton of orders, but at the end of the day, they're not making any money on it. So it's actually better to sell at a higher price point and maybe have a tiny bit less sales, but now you're actually making money on it. Um, but talk me through, cause I know what we increased the pricing and this is going to kind of segue into the conversation about party favors, but I know you get a ton of traction on Etsy specifically for party favors, people coming to you, some really, really, really large orders that obviously like your increased pricing, people are still coming and buying from you. So just tell me a little bit about some of the party favor orders that you've gotten. I know you had a huge one in January. I know you, you've had a lot more since then. So tell us about like the number of units people are buying, the price, the order price, the total value that they bought tell us a little bit more about that on the party favor side for my party favors um i've always been selling them and this year this past year going into the new year i've been getting more 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 questions about them more quotes and the sales have been a lot larger the largest one i've had um the one that you mentioned my lemon soaps that was 110 units and it was 1500 a $1,500 sale. Yeah. So, and what happened was the bride was looking for something very specific. And then when she came to my site, she saw that I had a gift set. And this was the first time that I was, I actually sold a gift set as a party favor. Cause usually it's just one lemon as a party favor, like a smaller gift but she wanted the entire um, gift set. Mm -hmm. So that was, yeah. that was a 220 lemons total, but 110 units. That's incredible. So, and that yeah, person that found that was, you on Etsy, right? Yes. It's because you were on Etsy. She yeah. found you and she ordered this huge amount. And then tell me a little bit more, cause I know you've gotten like 25 unit party favor here, 35 unit party favor there. I know this book publishing company reached out to you via Etsy. So what are some of the other main opportunities? And I know I just mentioned some of them, but tell me in your own words, like what those were like, what you got, what people ordered and the experience. So some of the other party favors I received, they're from either 10 and up. 10 is like very small. Um, I've done a few like dinner party gifts, um, but most of my party favors start at about 25 and up. Yeah. So I've done um, my teal boxes, which were inspired by Tiffany's. Um, I've sold those quite a, quite a few of those um, for weddings, sweet sixteen parties, engagements, um, and I've also done. I've also sold my donuts as party favors. Also, yeah, I did. Um, one was they had their gender reveal beforehand, so they knew they were going to have a boy. So I made donuts in the theme and their the boy theme. So we mm -hmm. did. I matched the colors, and so at that at that order was I, I believe it was fifty. 50 Amazing. units. So yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. And tell me about this book publishing company that reached out to you too and that opportunity. Yeah. So little, little Brown, um, publishing company, they, they did a Google search and they searched, um, I, I believe it was donut soap. They searched and all my photos came up like not, I think I believe nine photos came up and they clicked on it linked right to my Etsy shop. They sent me a message, a private message, and they ordered soaps to go with one of their books that they just published um, by Joe Lansdale um, called The Donut Legion. So yeah. that was really exciting because the soaps went as gifts um, to influencers that were gonna do book reviews. That is so as a, amazing. As a thank you gift. Yeah. So, and it, it's really cool because the soap, the donut, and then ties into the book. So that was really fun. It. Yeah, that, was that is so yeah. amazing. And this and is one of the main reasons. Too. I'll say that again and some exposure too. Oh, absolutely. And so. this is why I love Etsy because people are finding you from being on Etsy, these party favors, these unique gifts, these bridal showers, these dinner parties, these sweet 16s. And then you have like, 
publishing companies finding you and getting your products and sending them to influencers for the launch of their book. And like you said, the exposure that you get is so amazing. So one thing I want to just mention, um, obviously, I know the answer to this question, but you don't have your own website, right? So all of these sales that are coming through are strictly from Etsy, correct? They are. They're coming yeah. straight from Etsy. I do have a website. Um, I started it when I first opened the shop. Um, but it needs to be redone. So I, yeah. I haven't really, really officially launched it. So I don't take any orders through that site. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that I love it. Next, yeah, next but I'm, it's, it's even perfect because like you've had such great success on Etsy that it's like, we're not in a rush to get that, right? I mean, it's like kind of like a phase two, but Etsy's been doing so well that it kind of um, is working exactly how it's intended and getting you in front of more customers. So I wanna dive into that a little bit more too, just a little bit back to the fine tuning, because I know you mentioned um, like the pricing was one thing, but tell me more about the description. How do you feel now about your description in terms of the content you have on there from going through the program? And tell me more about your photos, if there have been any changes there. I know you just got professional photos, so I'd love to talk through that too, but give me some details on the changes to the description and what it's been like to get professional photos done. So the descriptions prior, as I mentioned earlier, they were like one sentence or two sentence, sentences. Um, so now after going through your strategy and formula, I guess you call it that, um, it has, it gives the reader of the buyer more information. Anything that they're looking for should be in there. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really get too many questions now about what size is it? What does it smell like? What is the exact weight? How does it come packaged? So all that information is in there. So I feel like when a buyer comes to my site now, all the information is there. Mm -hmm. And that will lead to, like, uh, will lead directly to a sale instead of questioning, then having to send me a message, having me to reply. So now all the information is there. I love it. Yes. And that's the purpose of it, right? To make it as simple right. as possible. So the customers have everything they need. So it's like a quick yes. They know what they need and to know, and then they add it to their cart and they buy. So I love hearing you say that. Um, talk to me a little about professional photos, because I know you recently got those done. So you have a photography background, but you went ahead and got some professional yeah. photos done. So just talk me through your train of thought. Was there any resistance? How do you feel now that you've done it? Bring me along that journey. Well, I've always just, like you mentioned, I have advertising and marketing photography background. Um, so I was always in on the production end. So I thought, well, I'll just take my own photos. Why do I have to have someone else take them for me? You know, so that was just my logic because why would I hire a photographer when I am one? I mean, I I shot professionally. So why would I have someone else do it? Um, I would hire photographers. But when you mentioned it to me and I started really thinking about it, um, I've been away from photography for quite some time and I've just been taking all of my product shots with my iPhone. And so I've taken out my professional lights and camera and setting, setting it up as a shoot. Um, so I just decided, you know, I'm going to hire someone. And I think that was the best, best decision ever, because now that I have the photos and videos and content to use for social media and for my website and for Etsy, it's, I think my, I'm forming a brand now after having these photos taken yeah. instead of just random shots or maybe not the best angle. Um, I, th I feel like I take really good photos, but now that I've had professional photos taken and video, it just is elevating it even more. Mm -hmm. So it's been, yeah. yeah I love best it. Decision. Good. And I'm going to take more and I'm going to hire a photographer again to do more. Um, cause there's only so much we can, we can capture in one day. Mm -hmm. So we did stills and we did videos. So it, it, is the best decision. 
Good. And I love hearing you talk about that because I think this is so important. And I think a lot of people, I mean, even myself, I'm not like a professional photographer at all, but I consider my photo skills using my phone pretty, pretty good. Right. And I think a lot of people feel that way. And some people don't have the background like you, but I think sometimes people still feel like pretty confident in their own photography skills. But man, like you said, it's just building that brand, that cohesive look, those professional photos is just taking it to another level. And I love hearing that you're already thinking of the next photo shoot and already talking about that because it shows how much like confidence it gives you in your business and how you start to just feel like this is a brand, this is a business. I'm taking this seriously. I'm investing in it. I'm getting this whole cohesive look and it's just elevating everything. Like you said, your Instagram, it's going to be on the website, on Etsy, on fair places like that. So I just love hearing that story because I think that's been something that's, that's been really big for you, right? It's just up leveling everything. You had those basics, but we talked about up leveling the pricing to make sure you're making enough. We talked about up leveling the description. So there's no questions that the customers have. We talked about up leveling your photography, which is so exciting. We talked about the amazing party favor orders that you're getting. Now I have two remaining questions that I want to talk you through. So the first one is give me a little bit of insight into the holiday season in this year because you made a ton of these changes before the holidays and i and i think what you told me is like a pretty crazy number of how many sales you had in like three months during the holiday season so tell me more about what your holiday season was like and how that kind of rolled over into january too after the holiday season ended so right right when i joined it was right before the holiday season so we made all those changes pretty quickly and then it was like, boom, the, the holiday was here. Um, so I got a lot of orders. I, I got I got a lot of orders. They just were coming in by like 10. Mm-hmm. There wasn't one day that, that passed that I didn't get at least 10 orders. And I, I went from 600 to 1,000, I believe it was three months, yeah. three or four months. That's crazy. And, so just in that short period of time, I hit my goal of a thousand sales. Mm-hmm. So now the next goal is 2000. Yes. But, <laughs> and we're going to get so there for sure. The sales just kept coming in, coming in, coming in. And then I was like, you know, being in the program too, trying to figure out my inventory, trying to figure out how fast I can make everything. And so I just learned a lot in a short period of time because I had to. I had to keep up with all these sales coming in. Um, So that was. That's amazing. It was fun. It was fun. Yeah. I'm sorry. It it went into January. Mm -hmm. So that was great. Yeah. And I love how you said it was like 400 orders in a matter of three months. That's insane. So what, October, November, December, right? And then it trickled into January. You got that huge party favor order, $1,500 in January. And then you've continued to get these opportunities and orders, which I think is so amazing and just shows the power of Etsy and the power of refining and fine tuning, which I think has been like the, the moral of this entire conversation. The last thing I want to dive into is tell me a little bit more about Star Seller. Did did you ever have Star Seller before joining the program? And what kind of helped you to get Star Seller? Because I know you have had it consecutively for a few months now. So paint the picture for us on that topic. Um, prior to the program, I was never a Star Seller. Um, and partly because I wasn't I wasn't focused. I, I you know, it was just kind of like a side side job. Um, so I didn't, I didn't have the focus that I have now. And now that I'm doing this full time, there's no reason not to get an order out same day, Mm -hmm. if not within 24 hours. So having that focus got me to star seller. Absolutely. I love it. Yeah. And just kind of like taking Etsy a little bit more seriously, right? Seriously. 
Yeah. Exactly. And like hitting those metrics and treating it like a real business. And now it's just been exploding every every step you take, either by like dedicating and committing to it or every step you take in terms of investing your time, your energy, your money. It just solidifies that, hey, I'm building a real business and you're starting to get like star seller consecutively. And that helps to get more orders, too. So it's this beautiful, beautiful picture of all the small components that really have come together to help you to get to where you are now. So two final questions for you. Okay, maybe like three, sorry. I I keep saying final questions and more pop in. So first one I wanna ask you is, what advice would you give someone who has an Etsy shop, who maybe has 600 orders, right? Joined the program and is now on this path of making changes because they wanna reach results like you did of an additional 400 sales, right? What, would, what advice would you give them in terms of like, you gotta do the work and maybe it's like the boring work, the fine tuning, the details, but that matters. Like, how would you explain that to the person who's maybe in that situation based on what you really experienced during your time in the program? My first advice would be is to follow the program step by step, hundred mm-hmm. percent, um, and put in the work because the results are not going to come without the work, and just taking it step by step, making sure you're completing everything, and then making the changes that need to be be made. Um, I think overall, just putting in the work. There's no, I mean, there's really no other way. There's, there's really no other way. Yes. Um, you just got to be focused and consistent. And, you know, it all comes down to, as you mentioned before, how badly do you want it? And how hard are you willing to work? Because mm-hmm. it just, things just don't happen <laughs> out of thin air. Mm-hmm. Um, that would be my, my number one advice. Yeah. And I think it's spot on, right? Like I mentioned earlier too, people think, you know, it's this one big change, but no, it's putting in the hours, it's doing the work, it's making the changes, it's going step by step. It's really looking at it from, okay, I kind of did this, but I could elevate it by following this, this, and this, and what else can I learn above and beyond from what I've already tried? So I love, love what you said, because I think that's a lot of what goes over people's heads sometimes that they don't realize like, yeah, it's work, but it's so worth it because look at, this segues into my next question of like, how do you feel now? Do you feel more confident? Do you feel like it's more of a real business? I know you said you are doing this full time now. So just tell us how you feel going through this program, seeing the results that you have and being in the place that you are now. I feel, I feel like now I have, I've formed a business, not just a hobby. And I treat it, a, I treat it like a business too. Um, and I'm definitely confident that people really like my products and that they, they will sell at the price that they're selling at. Um, I, I think that's yeah the main thing I think is that's that beautiful. I feel like I definitely am confident in what I'm doing. Yeah. And treating it like a real business. I mean, that's beautiful. Having that mindset shift of like, yeah, this is real. This is legit. I'm in it for the long run. I'm making it happen. Um, And you should be so proud of the amazing work you've put in and the progress that you've seen. And I just appreciate you so much talking more about your story and sharing your insights, your advice, and really taking us along the journey of where you were to where you are now and and all the hard work that went into it and the results and confidence that that you've seen from it. So I, I so appreciate you taking the time to share with us. I would love to just end with you letting us know your Instagram handle, your Etsy shop name. So where can people find you and see your amazing design? dessert, donut, soaps, and everything that you have to offer? Um, you can find me on Instagram at sweets. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> my Instagram handle. Sweet Rosie's <laughs> underscore soaps. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> you can find me at sweet Rosie soaps, sweet underscore Rosie soaps on Instagram. Um, and yeah. Awesome. Cool. I'll make sure to link your Instagram and your Etsy shop below just in case anyone wants to check it out. Uh, And again, thank you so much, Rose, for taking the time to chat with me today. I appreciate it.
Great. Thank you so much, Monica. I, I appreciate all your, your, your help and assistance. And it's been a great journey so far. Oh, thank, thank you. you, Rose. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>